So I made a video recently talking about my new computer upgrades here in my office. Well, to go along with the new computer, I wanted to upgrade my storage because I have a few external drives currently and they're just, they're getting a little bit full with all the videos that I've been making over the last six and a half years or so. So when I saw a deal on Amazon for a four bay Drobo, I had to go for it. Not gonna get too in depth with this, but basically this four bay Drobo is USB 3 connected. It does have four bays in it, so you can put four hard drives into it, compatible with both Mac and Windows, so it works with both HFS Plus and NTFS file systems. And you can put up to four six terabyte drives in there. I do not have four six terabyte drives. However, I do have four four terabyte drives because six terabyte drives are ridiculously expensive. These were not terribly bad. They're not RAID drives or NAS drives. They are literally just plain Jane Western Digital Blue four terabyte drives, but they should get the job done. I did the whole calculator thing on Drobo's website. It says I should have a total of 10.89 terabytes of storage when this is all said and done, when previously I was looking at about four terabytes, maybe less. So this should last me for a little while, hopefully. I'm gonna take this big box and put it in the floor. And first up, there's a little box inside of it that says, welcome to the world of Warcraft. Nope, Drobo, probably for the best. And I know there's gonna be complaints, there's gonna be concerns and questions about why I didn't do a free NAS box or why I didn't do some other form of hardware raid or a NAS device. Drobo, again, sounded like the simplest plug in your hard drives, it'll figure out the rest option, and I kind of appreciate that. Here's some installation instructions inside. Go to drobo.com start, install the Drobo dashboard, insert your drives, connect it, power it on, format everything. I can handle that. But inside this little box, there is a USB 3 cable, a full-size USB 3 cable, a power cable, and the brick to go along with it, a little packet with safety and warranty information, as well as a little Drobo sticker. And that's that. And then what I can only assume is the Drobo itself, in what appears to be a shopping bag, a reusable shopping bag. <laughs> that is hilarious. Take a look at that. These are the kind of bags that we take when we go to the grocery store. So I guess maybe we've got one more now. But inside of my reusable shopping bag, there we go. It's actually really awkward to try to get this out because of all the edges of the bag and everything. But there we go, I've got the feet out. I'm gonna slide this up and out. It is a Drobo. So here on the front has the Drobo logo. Peel off all this plastic. You know what, I'm gonna move to a different angle. This is just awkward now. All right, apologies in advance for the, the weird contrast here. Dark table, dark Drobo. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can open up the front. There you go. Here's some info about the database actions required. None, the system's healthy. Add a drive here soon. Do not remove this drive. Add a drive here now, it's dead. Drive failure replace. And there's actually a little thing in here that says important. Make sure to read the quick start card. Read the quick start card. Pre-existing data on drives is gonna be erased and shut down Drobo safely to avoid the risk of losing data. All kind of obvious things, but you just never know. But this looks very straightforward. Just four drive bays where you will slip the drives in. You have your power indicator and your transfer indicator, as well as LEDs across the bottom to show how full it is. The status LEDs for each of the drives here on this side. Big long enclosure. Then on the back you have your USB 3 port, power plug, and your power switch, which is not actually a switch as much as it is just a button, and a little Kensington lock if you choose to lock it up. So at this point I'm gonna go ahead and again read through the manual stuff just to make sure I'm doing everything okay. Don't wanna screw it up. Then we'll stick the drives in, we'll hook it up, we'll get it all ready to go. Well the installation guide told me to install the Drobo dashboard on my machine. I went ahead and did that. And then it says to insert the drives. So I guess it's time to do that. So we'll start from top and then go down. And it looks like it should be just as simple as put it in, push, and it's done. And it says to do a minimum of two drives. I have four. And then hopefully we will be good to go ahead and hook everything up. For some reason, the entire face of this thing is covered. Oh, it's magnetic. That's cool. But the entire face of this thing is just covered in dust from sitting on the table for just a few minutes. Anyway, neat that it's magnetic, so you just kind of let it clamp back on itself. So I will go ahead and hook this up to the desktop and we will see what happens. Drobo is plugged in, everything's ready to go. Press the power button, lights come on, and you can see here in the front, lights are on. Looking at the little included guide, everything is kind of yellow. It looks a lot more yellow on the camera, but it's kind of a greenish yellow. And it's going through its little startup cycle. Power little LED here is going from green to orange. So it's gonna take a little time and do its thing. And now it's green. That literally took less than 10 seconds. All right, it's about, I don't know, minute and a half or two minutes later. Green with green. This actually looks green now and a little bit more green on camera. And the uh, Drobo software actually shows it's ready to be registered, so let me do that. And it does say the Drobo is registered. Start date 11-23, end date 11-22-2016. And here we go, the main dashboard screen. We have one Drobo that shows up. Should be able to double click on it. it. Says the drives do not appear to be formatted. Do you want to format them? Sure. 
Uh, Drobo will be attached to a Windows Server, Windows 7 or newer version. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. You can give it a drive letter. I'm going to give it Z just because no no real reason. It says a 16 terabyte volume will be created since there's a 10.8 capacity. We're going to say next. Z, Drobo, NTFS, 16 terabytes, and format. So here we go. Got the activity light going nuts. That definitely wasn't the five minutes they said it was going to be. So we hit OK. It shows our health is good. Shows four green drives. Got the firmware version 3.1.1, although Drobo site says there's also a 3.2.2 firmware. And actually on its own, it said a new version of Drobo firmware is available. Do you want to install it? Yes. Please complete and stop any data transfers. I'm not doing any, so okay. It's gonna download its file, and then I would assume after this is done, it will probably do the 3.2.2 afterward. All right, so here's the status. It did two firmware updates, so it is now at 3.2.2. The capacity shows 10.86 terabytes of total free space. However, the volume shows 16 terabytes. I'm guessing just because that's the size of four four terabyte disks. It's got a bunch of tools in here, so you can do some things to the Drobo. You can format it, you can shut it down, rename it, or even turn the blinking lights on or off. You can even check for updates and do a manual update in case you can't find them. And then there's Drobo settings to deal with dual redundancy if you want it to have two drives be able to fail at a time. And you can even let the drive spin down if you want to. I'm probably going to leave that on for now because the Drives I've been using have been spinning down and it's not terrible. And you can turn the lights down if you want. It's at 10 right now. Let's see if we take it down to two, hit okay. Yep, that's much, much more dim. I may actually do that. Take that and turn it back up to eight and then hit okay. It goes much brighter, very easy to change. And I will say the, the little teeny bit of time it's been going here, I can definitely hear it running. So it may not end up sitting here on my desk for long, but we'll just sort of have to see how it does when it's all closed up and when it's in use and everything, but definitely not a bad addition to my desktop so far. And I've been copying data from one of my older hard drives to the Drobo array for a little while now. The speeds have been hanging, well, they're not at the moment, but they were hanging right around the 150 megabytes per second mark, usually between 130 to 150, as you can kind of see there. And so far I've copied a total of about 675 gigabytes. So at this point I have loaded about a terabyte of data onto the Drobo, and I thought I'd give you just my day one thoughts and impressions of it. It was extraordinarily simple to get up and going. Basically pop the drives in, install the software, plug it up, turn it on, good to go. It did the majority of the rest of the work for me, including updating the firmware. Awesome. It does only provide you with one volume, and it actually says the volume is the full size of the available storage, not the full size of what's available after you take off all the redundancy. Not sure how that's gonna pan out long term. I don't think I'm gonna have 16 terabytes of data anytime in the near future though, so I'm not concerned. It does get a bit noisy. When I was copying data over to it earlier, it definitely was very, very audible. Sitting just a few feet away from it, I could hear the hard drives crunching, as you'd expect. But sitting here right now, where it's not really doing anything, it's not making any noise, so it's not an all the time noisy kind of thing. And as I mentioned in the earlier clip, the speeds did stay right at around 140 to 150 megabytes per second. It kept dropping down because there were just so many files and there were so many different sizes and everything, lots and lots of video files and then supporting files, images and things like that. So it is kind of understandable that when it was going through loads and loads of those non-video files, that the speeds would drop off as it was going file to file. But it did sort of average out and stay right at around 140 to 150 which is, is not terrible. Part of that, it could also have been limited by the fact that I was going from one external drive to another external drive. If I'd been going internal to external, it might have been faster. So to round things out, wrap things up, for 200 bucks for the Drobo, plus the amount that it costs for all the hard drives, I'm definitely pleased with it. That said, the hard drives were the most expensive part of this, so keep that in mind. If you're gonna be picking one of these up and you don't already have drives to put in it, you're gonna have to pay hundreds of dollars extra to get decent sized drives to put into it. Total invested on this, I think, was $640, which to get 10 terabytes of usable space, 16 terabytes actually if you don't count the redundancy, that's not terrible, not at all. And it's super duper simple to work with, so I cannot complain in the slightest. So I will put links down in the description to where you can find these things if you're interested in them. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but to actually get the drives, the Western Digital Blue drives, I actually just bought USB 3 Western Digital external drives and ripped them open and took the drives out. And luckily they were blue instead of green, although I think blue and green are relatively similar now. So again, I'll have links to everything down in the description. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to, leave me a thumbs up below the video to let me know that you like this video. And you can subscribe to receive more of my videos when they do become available. And I will see you again the next time I post a video. Bye guys.